two. One. Test, test. Test, test. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Test. Test one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We are now about to begin the main. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly take your seat. I would seriously like to have you all out of here and into your favorite pub by 10.15. And I seriously want to be there with you. However, I will need your total total cooperation. Tonight, tonight is a very, very, very special night here in the world of EMS in New Jersey. As was stated earlier, this award ceremony started 15 years ago, and it was at a hotel with a pool, and there were only about 50 of us in attendance. And then, six years later, we came to Atlantic City. We did Atlantic City before it was the state slogan. And the reason that occurred was there was a woman who had a vision. She had a desire. She had direction. She would not be thwarted. She wanted an educational seminar and an awards dinner. The first one was in Princeton. Nice, but nothing like this. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, 750 EMS professionals and their family in one room. Unbelievable numbers. Tonight, tonight, as you heard earlier, is this young lady's last venture as state director of the Office of Emergency Medical Services. For 32 years, she has served the state well. She has put up with so much from so many. <laughs> Damn near cost of her life, twice. But she had the strength to carry on. Therefore, with the power and authority of my office of chairman of the EMS Council of the state of New Jersey, of which I have no power or authority, <laughs> I am declaring this night the Karen Halupke 2013 EMS Awards Ceremony for our New Jersey State Director's final appearance, ladies and gentlemen, Karen Halopke. Bob, bring up your wife.
Come on up, Karen. Come on up, Bob. And ladies and gentlemen, in her honor, a throne. Your subjects await your command. And flowers! There you have it for her final appearance here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Miss EMS 2013. I'd like to ask Dr. Jim Pruden and Dr. Desha to come up right now for a presentation. Jay, come on up, Jay. We're on a tight schedule. Okay. Loud. Going loud. Jay, Jay. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna introduce Jay Stifel. He's the present chairman of the EMS Medical Advisory Board. Go ahead, Jay. Thank you. I don't okay, listen. When Karen, Karen and I are about the same age. When Karen joined the Department of Health, the country was still reeling from the effects of a presidential assassination. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about Abraham Lincoln, but... <laughs> Seriously, seriously, back in those days, we didn't have good number counting. So, we're presenting this award from the Mobile Intensive Care Unit Medical Advisory Board presented to Karen Holupke by the MICU Care Unit Advisory Board in recognition and appreciation of over 30 years of dedicated service to the EMS community and citizens of New Jersey presented November 15, 2013. Thank you very much, Karen Holupke. And, and Jim, 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 stay here with me, please. Jim Pruden is the past chair of the State EMS Council, of which I now serve. And in recognition of Karen's dedication to EMS in the state of New Jersey, the New Jersey EMS Council offers this certificate of recognition on this special day in your life. Congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and as part of tonight's program, Karen will sit in the throne. <laughs> These we have to get back to the funeral parlor by 9 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> oh, there's a vase, too. We stole the vase and everything. M Major, don't say anything. All right, moving right along. As part of tonight's program... And in order to move it very quickly, we need your absolute undivided attention. Every, every nominee, every honoree is very, very important to EMS. What we're going to do is we're going to move the program along. Every honoree is going to have their picture taken with the Queen Mother tonight. <laughs> because this will be her last public appearance. So at this time, I'd like to bring up our first presenter, a very dear friend from the EMS Council, one of the leading pediatricians in the state of New Jersey, Dr. Al Sacchetti. Nice, nice touch. All right, we got this one? Is this one? One, two, one, two. this works too, Al. Want to do a duet? <laughs> the Jersey boys. <laughs> the hell you left. You were supposed at? to make sure he took his medicine. Oh, sure, and, Al. Oh. Yeah. Want to put it in here? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You tried. Obviously, this is not rehearsed. <laughs> All right. I get the opportunity every year to come up here and give the awards for the outstanding EMS action by a youth. And tonight we have four children that are very worthy of Karen's last meeting here. The first is a 12-year-old who was home when her mother began to feel dizzy. 
She became unconscious and slipped into cardiac arrest. Unfazed, this child called 911, mobilizing the necessary pre-hospital response that ultimately led to her successful resuscitation and excellent neurologic recovery. For remaining calm under pressure and recognizing the need to call 911 immediately, we recognize Emily Alter this evening. Emily, come on up. Over here, over this side, please. That's it. These are the cheap seats, right up this way. You can sit or stand. You're, the, you're in charge. Congratulations to you. Our second recipient was home with her family getting ready to go to bed when she heard a weird noise coming from her mother's room. As she entered the room, she discovered her mother in respiratory distress, unconscious and unresponsive. She called for her father and sister to call 911, and after summoning help, she began CPR on her mother. Two weeks prior, she had been recertified in CPR, which she had learned at the age of 12. Her father, who was an EMT, and CPR instructor for the local EMS service agency assisted her with the CPR until the police and EMS crew arrived. Her mother was successfully resuscitated and left the hospital with an excellent neurologic outcome. When she turns 16, she will officially join the North Arlington Volunteer Emergency Squad because she's already act acting as if she is a member. Uh, continuing the legacy of her parents, both of whom served with the EMS. Come on up here and join us, Cheyenne McDermott. Hey! Cheyenne! Come on down. Bow to the queen. While at school, our next award recipient used quick thinking and good judgment when he recognized that his friend was choking on a pretzel during recess. He used the Heimlich maneuver on his friend before the adults in the area even recognized the young man was in trouble. He credits Sesame Street for teaching him how to do the maneuver. <laughs> Thank you, Bert and Ernie. Uh, for demonstrating remarkable responsibility and taking quick and appropriate action in saving a life, we recognize William Runno this evening. Bill, come on up. Come on up, Bill. There you are, buddy. Right over here, pal. Right this way. All right, pal. Huh? I want to get my picture taken with Bill. I'll, I'll look tall. And her final hero is the youngest recipient ever because she began assisting the volunteer members of her local rescue squad when she was an infant. She has volunteered for almost a decade as a patient in training exercises involving pediatric emergencies. She has been placed in more car seats on stretchers than anyone else in the country. <laughs> she recently assisted with the application of a backboard on a child in a school bus. She instructed the people how to do it who didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> she now shares her knowledge with other youngsters in teaching them the protocols of 911 access. And for all her educational activities, we are pleased to recognize Marissa Sampson, Come on up, Marissa. Come on up, dear. Oh, and escort it. What? 
By the way, to the parents of the uh, recipients, we will have photos available to you. Um, God knows when. <laughs> you might want to buy the whole package. They have the little ones and the big ones. And suitable for framing. Okay. Dr. Sacchetti, wonderful job. Great. Those youths are good, huh? Ah. Okay, let's see now. Moving right along. My turn. Outstanding hospital emergency department nurse. And we all love our emergency department nurses. Sometimes they're not thrilled to see us, but uh, our next recipi recipient works tirelessly to foster a team atmosphere between EMS and the ED, involving both in decisions large and small from how patients should be registered to streamline EMS transfers of care, to the layout of the new ED construction project to best suit EMS needs. She is the first administrator in the door Monday morning and the last to leave Friday night. She tackles tough fights in the name of better patient care and is an advocate for her employees during the time and they never sleep. God bless them. Their resources are thin and she understands that she gets the most from her employees. They must be treated with respect and kept in the loop. She understands that emergency medicine starts before her ED or, ED or doors open and truly believes that EMS is the integral first step. Ladies and gentlemen, nice round of applause for Judy McNulty. Our next outstanding EMS action by a citizen. And I believe that there's a, a one paramedic would like to come up that was involved in this case. Joe Edelman, please. Our next recipient is a Comcast cable repairman who, when he knocked on the door of his assigned residence, witnessed the homeowner collapse. It became obvious that the resident was in trouble. So this repairman forced his way into the house. He observed a man lying on the floor who was unconscious and unresponsive. He took it upon himself to initiate the 911 system by calling Salem County Dispatch who provided instructions on how to perform CPR, which he did until the first responders could arrive. Because of his quick action and the willingness to help a stranger the patient regained a pulse before arriving at the hospital. Michael Booker, please step forward for your award as Action by a Citizen. And presenting with him, Joe Edelman, who is a paramedic that responded, that participated in the successful resuscitation of this man.
I'm certainly sure that we can all understand and identify with collapsing if the Comcast repairman actually comes. <laughs> Oh, well, we can scratch that later. <laughs> Outstanding EMS physician. As a former street-level pre-hospital provider himself, this physician recognizes the fundamental role of EMTs and paramedics as they play as the gatekeeper at the front door of the healthcare system. He believes that in order for pre-hospital providers to make appropriate assessments and interventions that benefit our patients, we must have an appropriate depth of knowledge to enhance and expand this crucial knowledge base, he is not content to sit at a desk and retroactively QA charts. To the contrary, he meets with staff members in all the various first aid stations on a weekly basis and all the EMS crews, engaging those crews in conversation, discussing the most, medical, the most recent medical topics in a manner that is readily comprehensible to all levels. This physician is an advocate for outstanding patient care in the pre-hospital area. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gerard Carroll. Moving right along, our outstanding first responder. While the community was still in darkness and trying to recover from the devastating effects of Superstorm Sandy, police, fire, and EMS units were dispatched to a reported apartment fire. Tenants had begun to evacuate their apartments when this police officer was provided with the information about which apartment appeared to be on fire and that the resident might still be inside. The officer gained access to the second floor apartment by forcing open the front door. He found the apartment filled with choking smoke and water spraying from the automatic sprinklers. As he began his search for any victims, he heard a man's voice coming from the back room of the apartment. The resident was distressed and confused and had locked himself in a closet. The officer and the complex superintendent worked together to break into that closet physically removed the combative victim from the burning apartment and brought him to a safe area. The quick response and courageous actions made the difference between life and death. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Montgomery Township Police Officer Sean Sullivan. Almost took him this long to break into that apartment. <laughs> uh, Sean, you're a credit to the Irish community. An Irish cop, go figure. His brother's a priest. Dad owns a liquor store. Congratulations. At this time, the Vice Chair of the State EMS Council, Scott Casper. Which one do I use? Mick, I don't want you to keep that while I'm talking. Thank you. Let it be known, I'm the first person to shut up Mickey McCabe. <laughs> Let it be known that didn't last long. Right. Did I introduce you to the former vice chairman of the EMS Council? All right, thanks, Mickey. Uh, thank you, 
you, everyone. I, I got to say, it's, it's humbling to stand up here in front of 750 of my colleagues uh, and, and to know the job that you guys do every single day for the citizens of the state of New Jersey is absolutely remarkable. So thank you very much for what you do. And Karen, <laughs> thank you. I've been, uh, it's been a pleasure for the last 10 years to be able to work with you. Um, and, and I wish you the best of luck and enjoy your grandkids and your husband and whatever else you do after you get rid of the rest of us. So it's with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to first talk about the outstanding EMS dispatcher. In the early morning of January 8, 2013, this dispatcher was informed that an ambulance transporting a patient with both basic and advanced life support providers had crashed. He took immediate action. This one. Is this one? It's better. This one no, it is e better. This one has a disease. <laughs> Take that back to Bayonne with you then. Um, <laughs> He took immediate action to find out their location and the extent of injuries. In what seemed like mere seconds, he had called for an additional ambulance from neighboring towns, a supervisor, and an air medical unit. <clears throat> he attempted to establish contact with the driver of the ambulance and the paramedic crew caring for the patient inside to check on their status. He continued to provide dispatching services for the units in the fleet not involved in the accident without any impediment, all the while managing the ambulance crash. Initially, the name of the road where the crashed ambulance was located could not be determined. To compensate, he led another ALS unit in by giving them turn-by-turn -turn directions from a digital map on his dispatching console. Quite remarkably, it was an area in which they had never been. He portrayed calm composure over the radio and had a full grasp of the events without lapse. He followed model dispatching protocol by confirming events and locations clearly stating directions and roadways while allowing units to call for assistance, all while quickly and effectively getting units in need of assistance the appropriate resources. Please join me in recognizing Peter Forte. Next, we recognize the outstanding career EMT. This EMT has worked for multiple agencies over his 15 plus year career, starting as a volunteer. He has moved up the ranks within his current city-based agency to acting director, based upon amazing and desirable leadership skills and always conducting himself in a professional manner. He has a knack for immediately interacting with his patients, developing a good rapport in a very short time period. He takes the time to advocate for patients and EMS personnel. He seems to never be off duty, as was demonstrated by his immediate response in pajamas and flip-flops to the victims of a motor vehicle crash outside his home. By pairing his caring nature with local resources, he founded a help, he founded a help the homeless program by securing donating, donated blankets, sleeping bags, clothing, and hot food for those in need. As an advocate for those veterans who are among the homeless, he helped connect them with benefits and resources they did not know were available to them. Please recognize Dennis Picciano, Jr. Is Dennis here? Accepting on behalf of Dennis. We'll make sure that Dennis gets his appropriate recognition. <clears throat> Next, I'd like to recognize the outstanding volunteer EMT. Dick has been an active volunteer member of the Spring Lake First Aid Squad for more than 48 years. For all of these years, he has answered calls day and night in a professional and caring manner. Always one to stand up for principles, he has helped the Spring Lake Squad become what it is today. 
He is well liked by peers, patients, and their families. For nearly half of his life, he has come to the aid of his fellow man. Please join me in recognizing Richard Ulbrich. Next, we recognize the outstanding ALS SCTU nurse. This year's ALS SCTU nurse has over 10 years of nursing experience in addition to her paramedic experience of 20 years. She is known for her excellent patient care and is a highly, and is a highly respected mentor. She represents the hospital-based specialty care transport service well as she strives for excellence in both problem solving and quality improvement combined with a passion for nursing and healthcare. She dedicated many hours starting this new SCTU program and continues to be an exemplary role model for others in the unit and throughout the hospital. For experienced ICU ER nurses who have never worked in the field, she gives guidance and encouragement in expanding their skills in this new environment. She works two full-time jobs, one with the SCTU and a second as a flight nurse where her skill in critical care thinking continues to shine. Always researching ways to improve overall health care for patients and safety of others, and involved in public relations, where she teaches safety to young adults, as well as working with the, with the Every 15 Minute program. In her spare time, she is currently working on her bachelor's in nursing, as well as attending conferences around the United States. She radiates warmth and compassion and she ser as she serves others, and always expresses appreciation to others for their efforts. Please join me in congratulating Mary Beth Wiedemann. And last, for me, but certainly not least, and I was sworn I had to stick to the script for this one, but I got so much more. This paramedic was responsible for setting up countywide safety presentations throughout New Jersey to introduce EMS agencies to a new aircraft to help ensure adherence to safe practices. Given his education, knowledge, and expertise, he developed a confined space program focused on provider safety while still providing patients with critical medical assessment and treatment. He was selected by his peers to be a member of a new initiative for identifying employee engagement and customer experience. He has organized annual educational conferences, all with the goal of providing outstanding patient care. Continually current with today's best practices to ensure positive patient outcomes, 
always eager to master new areas of patient care in order to share his knowledge for the patient's best interest. Please join me in recognizing Bob Gardner as a paramedic of the year. And next, I'd like to reintroduce Dr. Arturo Brito. <laughs> 